Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm sharing how to make a reverse canvas. Also, I'm sharing how to use acrylic paint and baby wipes in place of stain on wood. I love this method because it is so easy to do and I love the end result. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new and if you are interested, check out my new Patreon account in the description box below. I'm using a 9x12 canvas that I bought from Hobby Lobby. This came in a pack of two. Hobby Lobby and Michaels have tons of different canvas sizes to choose from. I'm really loving this X-Acto knife that I just recently bought off of Cricut. It works so well and it even has like this cushiony grip on it that I really like. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link down below. First, I'm going to take the canvas off of the frame. So I will just take my X-Acto knife and cut along the outside edge of the back of the canvas. The corner edges are the hardest to get off, but you just need to play around with it until it comes off. Here's the frame underneath it. I like to pull off the rest of the canvas on the back, however I just leave the staples in. And now's the fun part, painting the wood frame. I'm using Apple Barrel acrylic paint from Walmart. I believe they sell it for only 50 cents each. The paint color I'm using is Nutmeg Brown. There's so many colors you can choose from. You can also use the Folk Art brand acrylic paint as well. When I was researching what paint to use, I read a lot of people did not have as much luck with chalk paint, so I have not tried that one out. Here's the baby wipes that I'm using. You can use any kind of baby wipes. I fold it up and dip it into the paint. This baby wipe method is so amazing. This gives you a stained look without having to smell that strong smell of stain. And there's not much of a mess at all when working with it. The color was a little lighter than I thought it was going to be. I added more paint to make it just a little bit darker. If you want an even darker look, you can choose an espresso acrylic paint or you can just add in some black acrylic paint with the brown acrylic. This method is just so convenient and a great cheaper option than stain. I also just love how it looks. I am sealing this with Krylon Triple Thick Spray. Now I'll show you how I put together my design in Cricut Design Space. I'm going to upload my SVG and I've already uploaded this from my files. So I'm going to click on that and insert this into Cricut Design Space. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so it's easier to see this. This is also a patron image if you guys are interested in my Patreon account. Now I'm just going to resize this so it'll fit on my canvas. I just measured it with my measuring tape and I'm going to make it 6.5 inches for the height. And that makes it 7.6 inches for the width. Now I want to click attach, then I'm going to click on make it. I'm going to be using iron-on, so I want to mirror my design, so I'll mirror it. Then I'm going to click continue. Even though I'm using Caesar Easyweed, I'm going to choose Everyday Iron-on. The Cricut Maker has an option for heat transfer vinyl other than Cricut, and I've tried it and it cut through my entire vinyl. So it cut through the backing and everything. So I just stick with the Everyday Iron-on setting and that works perfectly for it. If you have an Explore machine, you can make this as well and you'll just turn your dial to iron on. Now I'll just show you on my machine how I cut this out. I'm using black Caesar Easyweed. I load it into my machine with the vinyl shiny side down on my green standard grip mat. The Cricut will cut out my design. I take my vinyl off my mat, then cut out my design and weed away the excess vinyl. I 
I look up the heat settings on Cricut's page and it says to set it to 340 at 30 seconds. I set my iron-on design in the middle of the canvas, then place my Teflon sheet over it. You can use parchment paper if you do not have Teflon sheets, and these just help protect the canvas. After that, I set my Easy Press over it and hit go. That setting worked perfectly for the vinyl. I just center my design with the frame, then turn it around and take my staple gun and staple the corners first. After I do that, I staple the sides. You don't want to pull the canvas too tight, but you do want to pull it a little tight as you are stapling. If the canvas looks a little loose, you can take a spray bottle and spray the back of the canvas once it's all stapled together. It's amazing how that works and tightens it up. I have another reverse canvas video where I do that in that video and I will link that down below. Then I use a hammer just to push the nails in a little bit better. If you are making these to sell, you can use hem tape and an iron to fold the canvas over. This makes it look really nice. I did this in my other reverse canvas video, so that is linked below if you want to see how I did that. This time I decided just to take my scissors and cut the excess canvas. Here's how it looks. I love reverse canvas projects because of how easy they are to make, especially when you're using acrylic paint instead of stain. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new to my channel, and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of my videos. I have a few more fall projects coming up that I'm excited to share. Also, don't forget to check out my Patreon account in the description box below. Have a great day.